Hello, welcome to ACT F3 Financial Accounting. Today we will be learning about IAS 2 Inventory. This IAS states clearly on the ways of how to value inventory and also a principle that is meant to be followed on how to value inventory. But firstly, because inventory is included in the cost of sales figure, let's get into how to calculate cost of sales firstly. Cost of sales is normally known as cost of goods sold and the contents of it are the opening inventory being how much was our stock in the beginning of the year and we are going to add our purchases figure. Now in some cases uh, the purchases are going to be returned. Make sure that you deduct that from here and we're going to deduct the closing inventory figure. Whatever was bought and was not sold by the end of the year that will have to be excluded from the cost. Now, this is your general way of calculating the cost of sales. However, th there can be additional figures that we need to include. It depends also on the company policy. Sometimes they want to include expenses. There are other additional costs, which are carriage inwards and carriage outwards. Well, firstly, carriage relates to the cost of having to transport goods either into the company or out of the company. You're paying a carrier. So a carriage inwards is going to be when you have to pay for a carrier for bringing the goods into your company. Whereas for carriage outwards, that's when the company is going to incur carrier costs for transporting the goods outside. Meaning the company is the one who's going to be selling the goods to the customers. So they may have to incur some carriage costs. The treatment will also be different. Carriage inwards here is added to purchases because this is going to be included as a cost of buying the goods itself. Because technically, we're buying the goods from a supplier and we're incurring additional transport costs. But in cases where the supplier is responsible, that is where they will have to include carriage outwards. So this is going to be included as a selling expense. Now, a selling expense can also be known as the selling and distribution costs. Carriage inwards is going to affect your gross profit. Whereas carriage outwards is going to affect the profit after the gross profit. So if in any case that these two are calculated or input in the wrong place, then it could affect profit differently. Okay, now let's get into a question for practice. Gwyn Tring, trading as clickety clocks, imports and resells clocks. He pays for the costs of delivering the clocks from his supplier in Switzerland to his shop in Wales. He resells the clocks to other traders throughout the country, paying the costs of carriage for the consignments from his business premises to his customers. So he's going to have to pay the carriage inwards and also the carriage outward. On 1st July 2005, he had clocks and inventory valued at $17,000. During the year to 30 June 2006, he purchased more clocks at a cost of $75,000. Carriage inwards amounted to $2,000. Sales for the year were $162,100. Other expenses of the business amounted to $56,000, excluding carriage outwards, which cost $2,500. The value of the goods in inventory at the year end was 15400 Prepare the statement of profit or loss of clickety clocks for the year ended 30 June 2006. So as you can see here, 30 June is representing our year end. Whereas, they give us a figure of 1st July 2005. So that means this is completely one whole financial year. So this is the beginning of the year. So in the beginning of the year, he had inventory of 17000 This indicates an opening inventory figure. So make sure you include this in your cost of sales. He purchased more clocks at a cost of 75000 Clearly, this is your purchases figure, also going to cost of sales. Now in here, they give you carriage inwards. Now remember, carriage inwards is supposed to be added to your purchases. So you're going to add 2000 to the 75000 Sales for the year were $162,100. So this is your sales figure. Now, they're asking us to calculate the statement of profit or loss. But we're just gonna make a simple one. So I'm not going to be writing this down. I will simply be showing you the answer. But you should be aware of how the format should look like. So we should be given sales of 162,100, deducting with the cost of sales, which in this case has opening inventory of 17,000, purchases of 75 plus a 2,000 carriage inwards. Now where is the closing inventory? It says here the value of the goods in inventory at the year end is 15,400. So this is an indication of closing. So we should deduct this and then we'll get our gross profit. Then other expenses were 56000 but this is not yet including your carriage outwards. So you're going to have to add this to your other expenses. So at the end, your answer should look something like this. Okay, 
Now, let's continue to further detail about inventory. The thing about inventory is that the value of it will change the moment it is becoming obsolete, meaning that the goods are no longer as useful as it was in, in when they were first purchased. Inventory can also deteriorate, which means that as time goes by, it starts to rot or it starts to spoil. So when this happens, the value of the inventory when we first got it is going to be different compared to when it's already obsolete or deteriorated. Goods might be damaged or obsolete, so its value reduces and must be written down to its net realizable value. So that is the principle that I use to state that should be followed in the case the goods become damaged or obsolete. Simply write down the principle here. Inventory should be recorded at lower of cost and net realizable value. So this is following the prudence concept in which any losses should be recognized beforehand. Now, what is exactly net realizable value? Net realizable value, or in short NRV, is made up of the selling price minus any selling costs. Selling costs are either the modification costs, costs that you have to incur in order to get the inventory to become saleable again, or they could also simply be your selling expenses. So it could also be selling marketing expenses. Whichever is lower, that's what the inventory should be valued at. So if it happens to be that after the inventory has become obsolete and the NRV has been found to be lower than the original cost of the inventory, then you're going to have to write down the inventory's value. So let's get into another question. Now let's take a look here. I'm going to be discussing A first. So as you can see, A has a cost of $20 and they give you other figures here. Now these figures are supposed to help you find your net realizable value. So the selling price of inventory A is $30. There are no modification costs, but there is a marketing cost of seven, which means this is going to be like your selling expense. So to find your net realizable value, you need to take 30 minus seven. That will give you a net realizable value of $23. So compare your 23 to the cost. And IS2 states that inventory should be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value. So the cost is $20, the net realizable value is 23. So you should take the $20 because it's lower. So in short, it should look something like this. Now, the $20 is the cost of one unit. You need to find the total value of inventory held. So there are 200 units that are held by inventory A. So that means 200 times 20 should give you the total value of A, which is $4,000. If you repeat the same method, comparing the cost and the net realizable value, you should get the same thing for B and C. B has a cost of 9, and it states here that the NRV is $8. How did they get $8? Well, let's take a look. The selling price is 12. Modification cost is 2, and this marketing cost is also 2. So in this case, the ex selling expenses or selling costs are $4 in total. So to find net realizable value, we need to take the selling price of 12 minus selling costs, which is $4. So we will get $8 as our net realizable value. So when you select the lower one, in this case, it's the net realizable value, you just have to times it with the units that you have, and then you should get your total value of 1,200. Let's continue to valuation of inventory. Inventory is still valued at lower of cost and net realizable value, but how we decide the value of each unit depends on the method being used. So in this case, there are three methods that are actually available. So the first one is first in, first out, meaning that the stock that enters first is going to have to be the one that is sold out first. The second one is last in, first out, or LANGFO. Now, IES2 does not permit this method to be used, and so it is prohibited. Now, third is average costing or average weighted costing, also known as AFCO. So the methods that we will be learning today is FIFO and AFCO. So FIFO assumes that inventory received first should be sold first. Okay, let's take a look at this example. So these examples I'm taking out of the F3 BPP study text, page 127. First of May, we still had an opening inventory of 100 units, had an individual cost of $2. And then there were further receipts, meaning that more inventory was being bought in into the company on 3rd of May of 400 units, costing $2.10 each. Now, 
FIFO and AFCO are going to be used to value the issues and the closing inventory as well. So as you can see here, we have issued 200 units. Okay, now we're still going to use the FIFO method. So FIFO assumes that the goods that were coming in first should be sold out first. When we're issuing or selling on 4th of May, these 200 units I'm going to take from the units that first came into the company, which in this case is 100 units. So if you look over here, 200 units earlier just now, 100 units is going to be taken from the 1st of May. And each of these units are at a cost of $2. Now what about the remaining 100 units? The remaining 100 units that are going to be sold on that day is going to be taken from the 400 stock that was bought on 3rd of May. So as you can see, using FIFO, we're going to take from the first one until it's completely finished and then we start taking from the next batch of inventory that has gone into the company, which is 400 units. So I'm going to take 100 from here to supply my issue of 200 in total. So that means the 100 is going to be having a unit cost of $2.10 each. So in that case, they're going to have a different value of both, but I'm going to total them to get the total value of this 200 units sold. So 100 times $2 plus the 100 times 2.10. The total cost of the issue will be $200 and $210. So basically, $410 for this 200 units that I sold on 4th of May. That is going to be the cost of the issue. Now, remember that we have taken 100 units from this batch. So now there's only 300 units left. So when we're going to issue again on 11th May, we're going to issue this 400 units. Where are we going to take it from? We need to take it from the first batch that came in. This batch will no longer be there because we already used the remaining 100 for the issue on 4th of May. So we're going to have to take from the next batch, which is this remaining 300. So 300 is going to be taken from here, but that's not enough because we're going to issue 400 units. So where are we going to take from next? We're going to have to take from the next batch or the next receipts, which was on 9th of May. So 300 was received. So that means we're going to have to take the remaining 300 and finish that all and take an additional 100 from this batch over here. So this 400 will be split. We're going to take 300 of the last batch and then the balance of 100 from the most recent batch, which was on 9th of May, which has a cost of $2.12 per unit. 300 times 2.10 plus 100 times 2.12, 630 and 212. So in total, the cost for these 400 units is going to be 842. So now we have used up this receipt. We have taken 100 from here. So that means it only has 200 units left. If you see here, we are only going to issue 100 units. So again, we need to take from the first most recent batch. This one is gone and this one is finished but we still have from 9th of may so that means we're just going to have to take the 100 from there so the 100 is going to have a cost of 2.12 so 100 times 2.12 will simply be 212 and that is your total cost for this 100 units being issued okay so that is the individual cost, but what about the closing inventory? Now out of this 300 units of receipts, we have used 100 for this issue and another 100 um, for this issue. So that means we have 100 units left from the stock that we bought on 9th of May. So 100 times 2.12. Now if you look over here, there's another receipt that happened on 18th of May. Now this now this batch was not used yet, so it is going to be unaffected because we had taken all of our issues from just this one batch of 300 units on 9th of May. So just take the whole 100 units times 2.40. So in total, our closing inventory is going to have a value of 452 according to the FIFO method. Okay, now for the average cost method, we're going to have to take a look from the study text. So let's take a look here. 
The cumulative weighted average pricing method calculates a weighted average price for all units in inventory. Issues are priced, so anything that is issued or sold is going to be at a value of its average cost, and the balance of inventory remaining would have the same unit valuation. So this is still using the same example. So let's take a look here what it means by weighted average price, but there's still another note that we need to look at. A new weighted average price is calculated whenever a new delivery of materials into store is received. So that means whenever we're going to buy a new amount of goods, we're going to have to update the cost of our inventory. So if we take a look here, earlier we had an opening inventory of 100 units and in total they had cost $200. Now on the 3rd of May, we have bought a further amount of goods of 400. So that means we're going to have to add the total cost of our inventory up to date and compare it with our total units that we have to get a new cost per unit. So if you see here, 100 units in the beginning had cost $200. With an addition of 400 units at the cost of 840, our total inventory now has a value of $1,040. And we currently have 500 units in stock. So that means one unit will be the total cost divided by the total units available. So that will give us $2.08. That's how we get our average cost. So in short, every time there are receipts, a new cost per unit will be calculated. And then how do we find the new cost per unit? We just need to take the total cost of the inventory divided by the total units available. Whatever inventory you're going to issue after that is going to be valued at the most recent cost per unit. As you can see on the 4th of May, we have issued 200 units. So this 200 units is going to be valued at the $2.08 because that is our average cost for one unit of inventory. So 200 times 2.08 is equal to $416. This kind of method is quite long because we need to keep updating our cost per units each time we receive a new batch of inventory. And it gives us the total cost of the inventory immediately. So under AFCO, the closing inventory has a value of 440. Whereas earlier when we were using FIFO, the closing inventory had a value of 452. So FIFO can give a higher closing inventory figure and we need to be careful when valuing inventory because if we overstate it or understate it, it's going to affect our profit figures. Okay, let's try this question. The closing inventory at cost of a company at 31st January 2003 amounted to $284,700. The following items were included at cost in the total figure. So inside this figure, we have these items. 400 coats, which had cost $80 each and normally sold for $150 each, owing to a defect in manufacture. So they give you a scenario as to why the value of the inventory might have changed. A defect in manufacture would mean that the, the value of the inventory might have deteriorated a bit. They were all sold after the reporting date at 50% of their normal price. Selling expenses amounted to 5% of the proceeds. So the only way we can find how much is the selling expense is to find how much they were sold for. So let's try. So for the coats, at cost, they were, well, there were 400 coats. So I'm just going to find total cost immediately. So 400 times $80 of cost. So that would be $32,000 is included in that figure. 284700 currently. Now what about the net realizable value? Okay, so the selling price is, well, they were sold for half of the selling price. So that means half of 150, which will be $75. And the selling expense is 5% of the sale proceeds. So that means 75 times 400, 30,000. The selling expense is 5% of that. So 30,000, which is 1,500. So basically our net realizable value will be 30,000 minus 1,500. So that will be 
28,500. So as you can see here, there is a problem with the valuation of the codes. Currently, they're all recorded at cost. So that means inside that total figure earlier, it's included at 32,000. But it turns out the net realizable value is much lower than how much the cost was. So we're going to need to fix that. We're going to need to replace the cost with the net realizable value, 284,700. And all we can do is take out that cost, 32,000, and replace it with the new figure of 28,500. The total cost of the inventory, including the new code figure, is going to be 281,200. But there was still one more item, so we need to confirm, is the cost higher or lower than the net realizable value? So 800 skirts, which had cost $20 each, these two were found to be defective. Remedial work cost $5 per skirt, and selling expenses for the batch totaled $800. They were sold for $28 each. So we know we have the cost, and we were given figures for the net realizable value. So let's get to it. So the cost was 800 skirts times $20, which should give me $16,000. And let's find the NRV. Now, in the NRV, we have the selling price. So how much were these sold in total? They were sold for $28 each. So that will be $22,400. And then we still need to deduct our selling expenses. So in this case, selling expenses were $5 per skirt and selling expenses were $800. So remember, we need to still include the modification cost, which in this case is the remedial work. So modification cost plus any selling expenses will be our total selling expenses or selling cost. So 5 times 800 plus another 800. So as you can see, the cost is still lower than the net realizable value and currently the skirts are recorded at this figure inside that total figure earlier of 284,700 so that means there is actually no problem with the skirts and we don't need to have any adjustment so at the end your total inventory figure will be 281,200 because you only need to reflect whichever is lower we have come to the end of this session. Thank you for watching.